So in this video we're going to develop the idea of the Ronskian of two functions, although we could uh, extend the idea of the Ronskian to n functions, but we're going to focus on just the Ronskian of two functions for right now. So let's suppose we start with two functions of x. Let's call it f sub 1 and f sub 2. And let's suppose that these two functions are linearly independent. So we just looked at and reviewed linear independence in the previous video. Linearly independent. And we know from uh, linear algebra that if they're linearly independent that means that there exists scalar c1 that we can multiply by f sub 1 plus c sub 2 times f sub 2 where when we set this linear combination of f sub 1 and f sub 2 equal to 0 the only solutions the only solution if the two functions if we're assuming they're linearly independent the only solution to this linear combination is the trivial solution c sub 1 equals c sub 2 equals 0. This is the only solution that exists if f sub 1 and f sub 2 are linearly independent and this comes to us from a linear our, our work that we did in linear algebra so there's no other choices for c sub 1 and c sub 2 that will zero out this linear combination if f sub 1 and f sub 2 are linearly independent. And so what we're going to do next is just take the derivative of both sides of this with respect to x. So c sub 1 and c sub 2 are just scalars. So we wind up getting c sub 1 times f prime of 1 plus c sub 2 times f prime sub 2 and the derivative of 0 is 0. And what we want to recognize is that this is a system of uh, two equations in two unknowns, c sub 1 and c sub 2. So if we think about uh, setting this up in kind of a co the co coefficient matrix form from linear algebra, it would look like this. We would go f sub 1, f sub 2, right? We, uh, we would get that coefficient matrix on the c sub i's, and then we would have f prime of 1 from right here, f prime of 2, and by matrix multiplication we would multiply this by the vector c sub 1, c sub 2, and this would need to equal the zero vector, zero, zero. So it's in that form from linear algebra, ax equals b that we worked with so frequently. And if we mul do matrix multiplication here, we can verify that we get back the two equations that we see here. And then what we want to remember from, from linear algebra is that this equation, this matrix equation, only has a only has a unique solution if a inverse exists. And if a inverse exists, the unique solution is gotten by multiplying both sides of the equation by a inverse. We get x equals a inverse b. And what we want to remember also from linear algebra is that if a inverse exists, the only way that a inverse exists is if the determinant of the coefficient matrix a is not equal to zero. And we, we learned that when we discovered that the uh, inverse, uh, inverse of A can be defined in terms of one over the determinant of A. So <clears throat> long story short, if AX equals B has a unique solution, A inverse must exist. And A inverse only exists, is, only exists if the determinant of A isn't equal to zero and we learn that in linear algebra. So here we are in a case where this equation here, here's our ax plus, uh, sorry, ax equals b form, so it only has a unique solution if a inverse exists and then our unique solution would look like c sub 1 c sub 2 equals the inverse of f sub 1 f sub 1 prime f sub 2 f sub 2 prime times the zero matrix zero zero and this would be this matrix the inverse of it so I need the inverse I should have written it first I need the inverse of this matrix I multiply both sides by the inverse of this matrix and it'll be times zero zero which will just give me when I multiply by the vector zero zero will just give me the vector zero zero so if the inverse of this matrix exists then the unique solution will be zero zero but but here's the rub we know that c sub 1 equals c sub 2 equals 0 is the unique solution to the system. 
if f sub 1 and f sub 2 are linearly independent, then the trivial solution is the only solution. So because we know that the only solution that exists is the trivial solution, we know that this matrix is invertible. Invertible. And if it is invertible, we know that the determinant of that matrix cannot equal zero. So this matrix must be invertible by the linear independence of the two functions, so this determinant cannot be zero. That, otherwise, we have a non-invertible matrix. And so in, in uh, differential equations, this particular determinant is given a name. It's called the Ronskian. And then the Ronskian can be used to determine if, uh, if two functions are linearly independent or not. So if two functions are linearly independent, then we know that the Ronskian won't be equal to zero. If, if the uh, if the determinant, if the two functions are linearly dependent, then we know that the determinant is going to be equal to zero. We'll have a non-invertible matrix, and there'll be infinitely many solutions to this uh, this system of equations that we see right here. So this is just this just comes to us from linear algebra. So the Ronskian, if the Ronskian isn't zero, we have a linearly independent uh, functions, and so this. Uh, kind of sums up what we just did on the previous side, slide. If you have two functions whose Ronskian isn't zero, then they're linearly independent. If the two functions have a Ronskian that is zero, then they are lin linearly dependent. And this gives us a quick way to check whether we have linearly uh, dependent or independent uh, functions. So for example, here if I have functions uh, x squared and 4x squared, which should be clear, it should be clear to us that these are linearly dependent. Clearly the equation c sub 1 x sub 2 plus c sub 2 times 4x squared equals 0 is going to have infinitely many non-trivial solutions. Pick, uh, pick c sub 2 equal to 1 and then just let c sub, two, c sub 1 equal negative 4 and it will equal 0. If c sub 2 equals 2 so that we get an 8 here, then let c sub 1 equal negative 8, the opposite of that. So there's infinitely many trivial solutions. But let's look at how this plays out if we do the Ronskian. If we take the Ronskian of x squared and 4x squared, which we know are linearly independent, then the Ronskian says, hey, take the two functions and put them in as row one of a matrix. And then take, for the second row, take the derivatives of those two functions and then calculate the determinant of that matrix that results. And if we do that, we get x squared times 8x is going to be 8x cubed. And then we take the product of the first diagonal minus the product of the other diagonal because we're just calculating a determinant. So 4 times 2 is 8, x cubed, and we see this equals 0, which tells us that these are linearly dependent functions. Notice the Ronskian doesn't give you any uh, mechanism for finding the c values of c sub 1 and c sub 2, that will z the non-trivial values that will uh, zero out this linear combination. It just tells you that you should expect to be able to find such values. We could ask the same question here. We could say, hey, are the co are, is the cosine function and the sine function linearly independent? In other words, is the only solution to this equation c sub 1 cosine x plus c sub 2 sine x equals 0, is the only solution to this the trivial solution c sub 1 equals c sub 2 equals 0? Because clearly that's a solution. And to figure, figure it out, we can just take the Ronskian. We can say, hey, take the Ronskian of the cosine of x and the sine of x, which is simply take the cosine function and the sine function and put them into the first row. And then in the second row, replay, uh, put the derivatives of those two functions. So minus cosine x here and the derivative of, sorry, minus sine x here. <laughs> That's a horrible. That's a horrible derivation. And then the derivative of the cos, uh, sine is the cosine, and then calculate the Ronskian cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x minus the product of the other diagonal. So minus sine times minus sine is negative sine squared of x.
and I have a double negation, so this is a plus e, and I recognize the Pythagorean identity that's equal to one, and one isn't equal to zero, so the sine and cosine functions are linearly uh, independent functions. So another example, suppose we have e to the x and e to the opposite of x, and we want to know whether those are linearly independent or dependent. We can calculate the Ronskian of e to the x and e to the opposite of x, which is going to be just a determinant of put the e to the x and e to the opposite of x in row 1, put their derivatives in row 2, calculate this determinant, so e to the x times the opposite of e to the opposite of x, so we get the opposite of e to the, we have the product of two bases, so we get to add the exponents minus the other, the product of the other diagonal, so we have e to the opposite of x times e to the x, the bases are the same, so we get to add the exponents, and we see that we get the opposite of e to the zero minus e to the zero, and we know that e to the zero is one, so we get minus one, minus one is minus two, which is clearly not zero, so e to the x and e to the opposite of x are linearly independent functions.